Ah, yes, hello, dear. So we're back. How are you all feeling? Great. Good. So we'd like to get you just to take a nice deep breath, get you grounded back into your bodies, get you settled. So we want to talk briefly here about working with tone and sound and the activation of sound locks and the removal of some of the sound locks that have been placed, that were put in place to keep you as an isolated vibratory planetary body. Tone and sound and the use of tone and sound has been done for, for eons and eons on your planet. All of you have some experience working with tone and sound. If it wasn't on this planet, then we guarantee you that you've had experiences on other planets. If you didn't experience it on Earth, then you put some sort of overlay or imprint into your records so that you had that experience. And what we mean by that is that if you were someone who is relatively new to the planet and you didn't have a lot of time to go through the cycles of lifetimes, what you do is put other people's records on your own. From where you're standing, it's identical to your own experience. You don't know any difference. All right. And this is what you will do. And this is often why uh, you have people who say, I was this person or that person. And you think, well, how could 150 people be that person? It's because they took that record on as their own. And for all intents and purposes, they were that being. Especially when you're talking about unique lifetimes where you've got rulers or you've got geniuses on your planet. All right, they're rather unique experiences that require a unique setup. So it's not going to be common for everyone to have that kind of experience. So what you will do is take that record on as your own. Now, when you start working with tone and sand, what we recommend is that you start by utilizing your own intuitive process. If you say, well, you know, I don't have a great singing voice, don't worry about it. We're not talking about singing. We're talking about toning and creating and generating sound with your vehicle. When you get out of your own way and you drop those beliefs about the quality of your voice, and many times you will have those set up because of lifetimes of persecution, when you let that go, you're able to produce different sounds. Because when you have fear, all of that contraction is heard in the voice. So those tones and sounds, which are the frequencies of that fear, are not processed, they're not heard as you project out. So if, if you're someone who's got a really good ear and you know what you're listening for, you can hear exactly what someone's issues are by the tone of their voice. Mm -hmm. Because there are particular qualities that are missing. You may have an issue with self-love, all right? Well, self-love is missing out of the voice. It's, that frequency is not there, or it's very weak. All this can be heard. So. Start with your own intuitive abilities. The more you relax, the more fabulous you think you are, the more fabulous you're going to be. All right? Now, as you start generating tone, where is it resonating in your body? How does it feel in your body? Play around with the vowels. Play around with the notes. You can go up and down the scale, changing the vowels. It's going to feel different in your body. When you hit one, does it expand? Does it brighten? Or does it contract? Does it make you tingle? Does it make you want to tilt your head because it sounds a bit off or it's in discord? So just play around. Now the most important thing when it comes to generating tone and sound is your intent. What is your intent? As we said, all of you have the awareness because of other lifetimes and because you are a divine being, you have an understanding of working with tone and sound. So when you set your intent, intuitively the body knows what position it needs to be in in order to match that frequency. Ask your body to realign with that. Ask the vocal cords to align with that and generate that tone. Your intention is so vital and so potent when you work with tone and sound. Now, for those who are more proficient, you can start working with overtones and harmonics. That is going to resonate up the dimensional scale. 
and that's why we're very fond of working with it. Your intent goes along, we call it a carrier wave, if you will. It goes along with that frequency, that vibration of matter. And when you start working with the harmonics, that intention goes interdimensionally. So you can start first working with your own vehicle, and then you can start working with the planet herself. All right? You can start working in groups. We're really fond of working with group energy because it amplifies the signal. If one of you is dropping out of the intent, say the intent is to uh, expand self-love, and one of you gets activated and says, well, you know, I'm, I'm really not good enough. I really shouldn't be sitting here in this circle. You drop your frequency. It's much easier for you to get back up to where everybody else is. You can find it again very quickly, as opposed to being by yourself where you're probably going to quit and walk out of the room. Yes, you're going to give up. So it's easier for you to flip back to that higher frequency. And then as you're establishing an intent with a group and you're toning, you're vibrating and moving matter, all right, you are changing your version of reality. You're changing your physical world. Because remember, it all starts at the energetic level. Energetically, it is your projection of your intent. And then at the physical projection, you're moving matter. You're realigning it through vibration and sound. Now, tone and sound has been used to power entire cities. All right, you could create a standing waveform. This is part of what was generated and created in Atlantis. All right, and, and many other civilizations and many other parts of the world. Many of your rings of stone were created to move sound, to hold sound. The stones are holding the resonance. So There was a lot that could be done, especially when you're working with, with crystals, when you're working with rocks, when you're working with stone. They would work with the tone and the sound. They would get the energy moving. The stones would hold it and vibrate with it. Often they were in astrological, astronomical alignment. Because they were in that particular position holographically, they were working with those other star systems. And it was your way of working holographically and connecting with other star systems. All right? Again, holographic. So if you recreate that image at a small level in front of you and you focus on that image, it just helps you to work holographically. We will even work with you oftentimes doing work with different stellar systems. We will put you in that constellation. We will put you in that star pattern to get you to realign. All right. Now, there are infinite ways of connecting. But again, you can utilize that holographic projection because somewhere within your own body, you are holding the star maps. You are holding the entire planetary grid system because you're holographic. It's there. It's represented somewhere. So you can go within your own body and find it. As you align your own energetic centers, think of yourself as aligning Mother Earth's energetic centers as well. All right, set that intent. As I align mine, I also assist her in aligning hers. None of you are required to take on extra energy from Mother Earth, by the way. Some of you will do this because of other lifetimes. And typically there's some sort of guilt or shame program running that you think you have to make up for. And so you may expend extra energy to do this. You're not doing it simply out of service. There may be an imbalance in there. So just check in with yourself and see why. All right. Is there another program running? Because that other program needs to be cleared. All right. Because you co-created those events with others in that other lifetime. And so there's no personal sacrifice that needs to happen now. We just want to throw that out there because this is very common and it's a fear program. And so we want to get you into the highest state of alignment when you're working with the planet as possible. So we want to drop that fear program. So when you're working with tone and sound, you can create harmonics in such a way that it creates a barrier. All right, literally a physical barrier. And there were times where there were locks, created sound locks, vibrational locks that were created while the planet was being seeded. All right. Uh, if you want to think of it as being quarantined, it, there were times where it was quarantined in order for things to be um, stabilized. 
all right? And there are still vibrational locks that you may come across in different areas of your planet, all right? As there were sacred rites uh, often created with many of your ancient societies, all right? They would create a sacred space. They would create a vibrational lock that they could step into. Now, another way for you to think about that is they would increase the vibration of that particular area so that when someone in the third dimensional realm came up against it the vibration was really intense and so they would feel naturally repelled from it it's a vibrational lock and they utilized tone and sound to do so some of those are still set because they've never been cleared all right you've got your your myth of avalon that was created out of a vibrational lock system all right they increase the frequency of it you can also think of it, if it helps you to think of it in this way, as what we were talking about before with the multiple versions of the planet, one on top of another, that they were sharing space, all right, as it were. They were just in different vibrational ranges. And that is established and keeps the bleed through from happening because of this lock that's placed on it. Take a deep breath. Now you can still work with your crystals on the planet, the crystals that are held within Earth herself, to amplify your energies. So there are larger crystals that you can connect with, but also even the smaller ones, because remember, they're all connected. So if you've got a piece of clear quartz that you want to work with, or if there's a, another structure of crystal that you want to work with, as you're working with that, understand that that information and what you impart with that one small piece of quartz crystal gets transmitted to every other piece on the planet. That's a lot to transmit, yes? That's how potent it is. Now when you work with crystals with tone and sound, play around. All right. When you find the right frequency, you will energetically open up a crystal. All right, you will expand its, its matrix, as it were, and it can receive information. You can store information. You can encode information into its field. This is what you did in other of your high societies on this planet, in Lemuria and Atlantis. They're encoded. The information is encoded. And then you'll lock the crystal back up. All right. How do you find the right vibrational signature? Again, through your own intuitive guidance. Play around work up and down the scale, work with the harmonics of it. When you hit the right one, you're going to feel it vibrate, you're going to feel the heat, you're going to generate a lot of heat, and uh, you may feel it or see it expand. All right, it's going to be different for each crystal that you're working with. So that's why we can't give you a particular formula, you're going to have to work with it. And again, ask for assistance, set your intent. Ask for assistance from the guides, you can call on us if you want. And allow your imagination to guide you. When you first start, you're going to say, I feel a bit silly. I don't know what I'm doing. But it had to start somewhere, yes. That's how all the discoveries are made. But what you start doing is, is tapping into some of those records when you allow that energy to start flowing, uh, especially when you're toning and sounding because it's clearing you out as well in the process. You think you're just working with a crystal, but really you're clearing out your own energetic centers so that you can receive the information on how to work with the crystal itself. Right. Now what you do when you start working with more of these crystalline energies is that you are infusing more love, more light into the crystal. There have been times on this planet where crystals were opened and that was not the program that was infused and that also created some of your problems in Atlantis but your intent now as you are trying to work with the earth is to infuse more love more support more compassion and again that's getting sent off to other parts of the energetic matrix it's getting sent off to other crystalline entities if you will crystalline consciousness other crystals on the planet So we're going to open this up to questions because we think there are a few. Um, my question is, um, what kinds of things would we want to be <clears throat> infusing into the crystal? 
Um, you can you can work at the personal level if you want. If there's something spe special that you want to focus on, if you want to focus on more compassion, if you want to focus on more trust, if you want to focus on more connection, you want to focus on more love, self-love. Uh, if you want to focus on abundance, you can you can focus on that. So there are many things, and again, each different crystal holds a different frequency. So it can help you to find or align with that desire. All right, and already you've all been able to map out a lot of what these different crystals do. So you can work with those crystals to help amplify the energy. You can program crystals to take you back to a specific frequency. All right, so if you've been able to achieve a high vibrational state and you program the crystal, when you hold the crystal, you can get yourself right back there because it's holding it nonstop for you. All right? That's what crystals do anyway. They're holding a particular frequency. And when you hold them, you start to resonate with the frequency of the crystal. So it's limitless, really. Many crystals are encoded. You find record keeper crystals on your planet. They're encoded with all kinds of information. It's like a, a CD that you use today that information gets burned onto on your CDs. And it's the same thing. They were, that information was imparted to crystals. So if you think about all the information you can put on a CD, it's the same kind of thing from other civilizations. It's a vast array of knowledge. It's limitless, really. Is it only crystals or all gemstones? Uh, all stones you can really work with. You'll find that the vibrational range is different. So some of some of what you wouldn't consider to be gemstones, the, the natural stones, they're going to have a slightly heavier density to them and usually a more simplistic structure. So. you may find it easier to work with some of the gemstones simply because of that. Because the vibration, their vibration is already higher. All right. Any other questions? And do we do the same thing with the crystal <clears throat> asking to have um, inf information imparted to us from the crystal? That's in the memory of the crystal? You can. Uh, you'll get uh, varying results with that. You can channel the crystal. All right. It may be a crystal that hasn't been programmed by anyone, that simply absorb the energy of the earth around it, uh, of the experiences of those on the earth around it. So that kind of crystal is going to have a very different record or library than one that has been specifically utilized to encode information and those you'll find and usually there's some sort of etching on the record keepers that you'll find. So how do the energy locks work? Like in relation to the Great Pyramid or maybe Stonehenge? Because there are multiple versions of those facilities. All right, and each vibrational level has its own layout. There are rooms that exist there that you will never see in the third dimensional realm. When you're up in a higher vibrational state, when, you've, when you have worked with that vibrational lock, all right, uh, you see more. So think of it this way. Uh, and specifically, it was utilized to work with the, with the mystery schools. We'll talk about that. Vibrational locks were put in place and they were established with tone and sound. So those who were not of a high enough vibration couldn't go into other areas. Yes. And it was perceived as a form of protection, all right, rather than a form of restriction in a negative way. Although as time progressed, it was perceived more in a controlling way to decide who was appropriate enough to be initiated. And it's a bit how it was twisted. Initially it was protection so that you you didn't experience something that you weren't ready for. So what kinds of things do you have access to once you begin? Well different games. Different games, different experiences. Specifically with the mystery schools, it was different tests. 
different tests of ability, how to manipulate matter. You know, once you got into the, the higher realms, you know, you would have to manipulate matter, you would have to project, you would have to bilocate, you would have to shift your molecular structure. And if you were, weren't uh, working at a high enough level, it could have been dead, it could be deadly. All right, and it was for many. They didn't make it through the initiation. But that was all part of the game in your own setup. You all get triggered here as we talk about this, about control and manipulation. All right, so just try to perceive this as a game and that you were a willing participant. You weren't a victim or a perpetrator. But there were all different kinds of, of games and different levels of access, different portals that became available once you got up to a particular level, a vibrational level, because those portals led to another part of the galaxy oftentimes, so you had to be of a particular vibrational level and awareness, because otherwise it would have been too great a shock to your system. All right, so you had to work your way through vibrational locks in order to get up and enter into the portal. Now, we'll talk here just a bit about um, portal and vortices. As we said, vortices kind of keep the dimensional structure in line. Not all vortices are portals. Portals can project you to different areas of the planet, or they can project you to other parts of the universe. All right. And they are established as a means of transportation. It's, it's a way of bending space, if you want to think of it that way. It's not wholly accurate, but close enough. And there are many existing portals, but again, unless, you're, unless you are vibrating at a high enough rate, you're not going to walk into them, you're not going to experience them simply because of the vibrations themselves. Not, and many times it's not that they have to be hidden or they have to be vibrational locks put in place. They simply aren't high enough. And when we talk about the vibrational locks that were put into place in the mystery schools, it was because others, these weren't huge differences in ranges, in vibrational ranges. They were, they were rather small. So they were put in place, as, again, as a form of protection because if one really took the time, they could raise the frequency high enough. So raising your frequency high enough isn't enough to access uh, or to unlock that? You also have to have a right tone? Or With those locks, yes. It was like a key. So if the lock wasn't in place, if you increased your vibration, then yes, you would be able to experience it because you were vibrating at that level of reality. With the locks, there was also a, a series of codings that needed to be accessed, a way of toning that would unlock. You would literally create an interference pattern with the vibration that was, that was put in place. So it would drop the wall. All right, so you could enter in. So for every frequency, there is an opposite frequency that will nullify it. And among the initiated, you would understand how to work with that and how to create and generate it, how to find it. Or you've been given it, one or the other. Does that help? Mm. Thank you. And the crystal score, could you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, they're all encoded with all kinds of information, and there is a reason that they are in the shape of a skull. There is a resonance that because you have that same holographic shape, you can access it. They were put in the shape of a skull so extraterrestrial beings could not access the information in the same way. They are records for you and you alone. And they were made by who? Well, it depends on the crystal, all right? There, many were interdimensional beings, some were humans, all right, so there, there are a wide variety. You've got 12 that you all think of when you think of Atlantis. 12 is a major number for the system. It's what this entire solar system is based on. And when you combine the 12, you get the 1, and the 12 and 1 is 13. 12 and 13 are power numbers. So when you get the 12 crystal skulls together, you get one holographic, 
all right which allows you access anywhere to any record it, it grants you access to your library not only to the earth library but also to Alcyon to the galactic library all the records of all the experiences of all beings on the planet are stored in the earth you store all your own records so we consider you to be the paperback if you will earth being the branch library the sun recording all of the information throughout the solar system would be your main library and then all that information is deposited in Alcyon which if you want to think of it like a library of Congress all right. and each one stores more and more information and you can go to any of the libraries to get these books some of the books though you're going to find that you're going to go to a larger source it's going to be easier to find and there are librarians in all of these libraries who specialize in finding records for you and you can call on these librarians ask them for assistance in identifying and accessing records and information now you put the 12 crystal skulls together you get the 13th but to activate it you're going to have to work with tone and sand all right and that's why they're in crystal so you're amplifying that signal of the 12 together and when you start toning in a room with all of those then you're going to get that holographic projection which are amplifying the signatures but they're stored with with all kinds of information about human history who you are your genetic coding and on and on and on now there are energies that are projecting themselves into the crystal aligning with the crystal who are there to also be of service to assist with information and that is often what you get channeled all right when you talk to a particular crystal skull there's a guardian or a keeper who assists a soul who aligns itself a consciousness that aligns itself because there are consciousness in all things even the small crystal that Wendy's holding in her hand that holds consciousness Does that help? Yeah. Yes. Could you give us a few more tips about um, accessing these the, the Akashic records? Accessing the records is no different than communicating with us. It simply is aligning with frequency, interpreting the frequency, and that's it. So what we always suggest is that you get yourself heart centered you've got to get yourself into that operating system that can receive all that data because if you're in the mind the mind just says extra i don't know what to do with it and it throws it out right it doesn't doesn't compute doesn't make sense mm -hmm. so once you're heart centered and what do we mean by that if you're in a place where you're experiencing joy you're going to feel expanded uplifted warm love you may feel tingles you may feel energy running when you're in that state then your heart's in it and to get there usually just thinking of something that puts a smile on your face will alter your frequency to that space so once you get heart centered set your intent i'd like to c connect with the akashic records i'd like to connect with the information that is for my highest good to receive now when you start to access this stuff it's going to feel like your imagination and you're going to have to trust it the more you work with it the more you're going to see that there is a separate unique vibrational signature to it that is different than your imagination you got to start somewhere so it's all going to seem the same at the beginning and then just ask for confirmation uh, if you're having difficulties connecting and you can visualize it however you want. If you want to see yourself uh, entering into a white room and a book on the table, the book holds your answer. You walk up to the table and you see the answer written before you. You can visualize it as, you know, going and getting assistance from the librarian and she pulls the book down for you. Perhaps she reads it to you or you read it to yourself. However you want to visualize it, doesn't matter but you receive the knowingness, you receive the information, you receive the frequency, you receive the energetic packet. Now we will say this, every time you will ask, you get an energetic packet. Now you may not be able to decode it and unwrap it and interpret it, but you get it. So 
so know that. Because it may not be for your highest good just yet for you to receive all the information. When you're ready, you will decide that you are ready and you will open it. No one else decides when you're ready except for you, by the way. It's not like there's someone sitting up there saying, oh yeah, she's achieved this level, we can give her access now. That's all you. You withhold or give yourself information. And you never take on any more than you're ready to. All right, and the universe always wants to support you, so it's constantly sending you frequencies and information and support. So, trust what you get. And then ask for confirmation. Remember, what you're pulsing out, you get back. So if you say, I wish to have confirmation, I wish to receive confirmation one way or another on what I received, you're pulsing that out, the universe says, all right, I'm going to bring it. So it does. You may find the same information in another book or somebody else may ha be having a conversation. All right, or perhaps you um, keep seeing repeated signs and symbols. There are a lot of ways we can work with you. But at the beginning, you've got to trust because it does feel like your imagination. Your imagination is connecting to source as you are filtering information through the mind. It's kind of the backdoor way to source energy. All right, you're not heart-centered, but you're still connected to source, but you're still filtering it all through the mind. Does that help? Beautiful, thank you. You're welcome. Can you give us an example of what toning exercises we can do? Well, as we say, just start for yourself. Just pick a tone, pick a note, pick a vowel, and start running it. All right, so if you'd all like to join in here, we can do a little bit now. All right, and we're not going to go into the harmonics and any of that. All right, we're just going to start with a, a, a simple vowel. So, feel free to join in. Mm -hmm. see how we played around there's no one right answer there's no one right place to go we slide up and down and harmon Some, oh, I'm sorry. sometimes it doesn't sound very pretty <laughs> all right doesn't matter and harmonics would be with um would have to be with another person at least like well, not necessarily because if you're creating overtones you are creating harmonics within your own right. body within your own cavity <clears throat> All right, and it and it's resonating out. So no, you can do that on your own. Mm -hmm. Yes. And within a group, it's not like everyone must uh, tone the same note or sound. Or not at all. Okay. Not at all. You can play around. You can create some amazing things. Mm -hmm. And it depends on your intent. When you all sit around and create an intent, that's going to change the quality of what comes out of your mouth. All right, it's going to change what the sound sounds like. If you are focused on love and receiving information, you're probably going to work with some of the higher frequencies. But is this effective if a person does it when they're alone using a crystal with an intention? Yes, yes. Because, um, and volume doesn't really matter here, but what you'll find when you hit the right note, it feels like the whole thing expands. All right, for your intent and what your intent is. So, your intent will color the sound. 
Now, there are beings who also work with the language of light, and the language of light includes sound, color, sacred geometry, and light. Right, so there's, there's a lot more to it. And all of you understand it, it's a universal language. So when beings work with you in that way, you can decode the information. Right now, you've parsed it out, so you're simply working with the tone portion, that frequency of the tone. You may work with the vibrational patterns, the geometric patterns through the crystal. You can also lay the crystals out in the geometric pattern to work holographically with that energy. But you're starting to rebuild up to the language of life. All right. Does that help answer your question here? But just play around. As we said, you know, it doesn't have to sound pretty. You don't have to be a singer. So anything else before we continue on? I guess I just have a quick question about, is that what, when monks do their alms and it's often... Um, the same, the same note, or it's in fifths. Yes. Is that, when they is, yes. Is, it, there's, is there a specific thing they're working on? Um, is it all love? Or? It can be different. They can set a different intent, but yes, usually it's about connection and alignment. Okay. All right. But yes, they understand and they remember what, what tone and sound will do. It will change all of the cells. They'll start to vibrate and align with that. Anything that you listen to, any piece of music is affecting you at a cellular level. Any sound you experience is affecting you at a cellular level. Any vibration that you experience. So when you start working with tone and sound, you're resetting your cellular structure. You're vibrating your cells. That's why we say when you first start, See where it vibrates in your cavity. All right. So now you've got a lot of assistance just um, standing on the other side of the veil. <coughs> so not only do you have the angelic realms, not only do you have celestial friends, but there are also beings who have been sharing earth with you in a sense. They're outside of your vibrational range, so you're not seeing them. And some of those beings um, that we're, that we're in referring to right now are some of the fairies, some of the divas, some of the nature spirits. And for those of you who came with the desire to work once again with Earth, to hold that frequencies, while everyone else starts to wake up a bit, you can work with them energetically. <coughs> and they've got a lot of information to provide you with about what they've been doing so that you can participate. Now, especially when it comes to some of the natural disasters, quote-unquote, some of them aren't so natural. Some of them have been manipulated. You've got a lot of weather manipulation going on on the planet. Some of what's going on has to do with the shift in vibration. It has to do with the sector of space that you're moving through with the high photonic energy. Also, this, the information that your sun is constantly sending you with solar flares. The... Sun, again, is, is a library. It is a metronome, if you will, for the solar system. It, it tells all the planets exactly what they need to be doing. So you can think of it also as a conductor, all right, uh, keeping all the different players in, in rhythm. And it's sending all that information out. It's sparking it all out. So you're going to find that your solar activity starts to increase more as you need more information, as you're asking for more information about what's going on so that you can awaken. And this is, this is support for you. What can happen is it also can generate a lot of fear. You all can get locked into this idea and notion of, oh no, what's going to happen here with the solar flares? Is it going to knock out our satellites? Is it going to you know, throw us into the dark ages? It can generate a lot of fear. But know that you'll be perfectly fine, that you always experience everything as it should be. So if that means that you don't have any TV, that means that you're meant to be unplugged from the television set and you'll be just fine. All right? 
So don't worry about it. That's a point. There's no sense in worrying. That's just fear. Stay present. Stay in the moment. So specifically when it comes to working with the weather, the elements, and some of this, you can connect with the divas. They're there working with a lot of the, the, the plants. Plants are also undergoing a change. For those of you who work with herbs, the properties of the herbs are also going to start to shift because the vibration of the herb is shifting and how you work with these herbs is going to change. All right. If you were to work with the herb 2,000 years ago, it would have a different quality about it than today because that plant is absorbing the vibrational frequencies of, of, of the earth and of the beings who are existing on that local area. All right. So it's absorbing all this knowledge and wisdom as well. It's a very different vibrational signature than, say, 2,000 years ago. Sometimes it's positive, sometimes not so much. Depends on the environment. But the properties are changing, and some of these plants are also changing. You've got species that seem to be disappearing. They're not really disappearing. They're shifting already. They're going ahead. They're already leaving. But you're perceiving it as you are damaging the planet, so you've got to change. So the way that they're leaving is setting you up to look at how you're interacting with the planet. Do you all understand what we mean by that? Yes. All right, so they all contracted with you, as it were, to help reflect some things back into mass consciousness. But really, many of them are just simply already off ahead of you. Some species will not stay. They're done. They've held their resonance. They've held their frequency until a time where you could take stewardship the dolphins and the whales, for instance, have been holding frequency for a very, very long time. And many of them are ready to go back to the home world. So you will probably see their numbers continuing to decline simply because they're going elsewhere. But you will set it up for yourselves to see that you are not living in, plan in planetary alignment. That's the message you'll receive. But in the grand scheme, we see that those beings are ready to go. Everybody take a breath. It's often harder for you to see animals as willing participants. You see them often more times as victims. All right? But they also know what they came here for, and they came here to be of service to you so that you could learn these lessons. So be mindful that you don't get caught in this trap. It can set up a lot of anger a lot of disgust, a lot of judgment towards other humans. You can see humans do things to each other, and that's easier for you to swallow than seeing something being done to nature. Try to look at the big picture. Try to see if you are playing that fear out in your own personal life, and if so, where, rather than just get angry. Because anger is fear. See where we're going here? Because eventually you will see that you will create your own version of reality. And yes, you may want to see things progressing, but everything has its rightful place, its rightful time, and its rightful experience. And that is part of the ascension process, literally letting go of all of those judgments and expectations of what that's supposed to be and what that's supposed to look like. Now, you've got fairies who are working with you. And um, many of you uh, will have interactions, those of you who have gardens, <laughs> those of you who spend a lot of time outside in nature will come across more of these, these beings and they are nurturing the flowers, they are, they are holding the resonance for many of the, the flowers um, and they're, they're quite um, connected with the trees and the plants. and. Their home world was destroyed, and Earth was their new home. But they agreed to share it with you, simply in a, a different vibrational range. So they're preparing, and they're interacting more and more with many of you, to welcome you into this higher vibrational range. So they're helping you to learn how to work with your gardens, how to work with the Earth, how to, how to listen, how to listen and communicate with the grass, 
with the trees, with the wind. That's really what they're there to help you with. So call on them. Now their vibration's going to be a little different, say, than ours. All right, but you can ask for their assistance and their guidance because they are experts in their fields. They can also have a pretty good sense of humor. Pixies as well. Pixies can be a bit more devious at times uh, as they like to often put you through your paces. <laughs> we would say often they like to see you earn your stripes. Um, so they may test the waters by seeing how patient you are, all right, by moving things around, by hiding things, <laughs> to see if you have mastered your emotions. All right, so they like to play. They like to have a good laugh as well. But feel free to call on them. They are, they are taking stewardship right now of the fifth dimensional version. All right, they're, they're working on it and they know that there will come a time where you will take ownership, that you will take care of that. They're, they're guardians. We wouldn't really frame them as stewards, but rather they're guardians. There is a difference. Any questions about that? Now, how do you work with them? How do you connect with them? It's the same thing as connecting with your Akashic Records. All right. All this is, is the same. It's about working with frequency and interpreting frequency. So getting yourself heart-centered, asking, setting intent, and then listening, trusting what you get. Many of you have had other lifetimes as pixies, you may uh, are fairies, and you may feel very, very aligned with those realms. And if that is you, all right, or you feel very drawn to the nature spirits, you feel very drawn to the divas, you may have worked with them in other lifetimes. Many other times on this planet, as we said, you had the awareness of beings in other realms and dimensions, sometimes off-world. But many of you would work, you would be liaisons, as it were, specifically in Atlantis and Lemuria. Even some of your pagan religions, much, much later, uh, as they worked with nature, there were those who still had the ability to connect and to channel, as it were, uh, and to bring through that information and the knowledge about the plants and, and the wildlife and the connection of all things. Your Native Americans, your Aboriginal tribes around the globe still make that connection. All right. Any questions so far? Is there any um, uh, anger from the elemental dimension as humans in terms of our um, the bad job that we have done thus far? taking the earth and disconnecting from them. No. And because, and the reason we say this is because they're not holding judgment. They understand that this was part of the game, this was part of the process. They wish that you would find another way to be there, but they're not holding anger. It's a human expression of fear, a third dimensional expression of fear. And they feel sadness that you're making a vibrational selection, but not anger, no. And remember, those elementals are also many of you, all right? Again, you don't have to start at the bottom and work your way up. You can project yourself into any position that you want to to have any kind of experience, expanded awareness that you want to. All right? Does that help? Yes, very much, thank you. Is there something unique to this Woodstock area? Is there a reason why today's participants reside in this area? Yes, there's a lot of activity in this area. Um, there's a, a conjoining of ley lines here there are a number of portals and vortices. The mountains themselves are holding energy, they're holding resonance, and they are also um, 
hiding, if you will, some of these portals. You can activate them and walk into the mountain. There's a whole other scene going on in there. So there have been a lot, of, a lot of ancients, if you will, a lot of tribal people who understood this. Uh, also, you've got a lot of crystal energy here. You've got a lot of support to hold vibrationally some of these frequencies simply because of the stones in the earth. And that is holding the resonance that's keeping some of this energy locked into place as opposed to seeing it dissipate where it has in other areas. All right, because these crystals are holding the energy. And each and every one of you is here because you want to hold that frequency. You want to make that connection with the planet. You want to, you want to be a steward. There are a number of ways for you all to locate some of these portals. One of the things that you can do is to activate, activate your own in, internal vortex and then see it connecting with other portals. All right, so in other words, get your kundalini going, get your energy rising. One of the visualizations you can do is simply to run white light up and down your centers. And when you're expanded, you can connect and, and receive information about where the locations are. All right, so that's one thing that you can do. If you want to do it in a denser way, you can douse. All right, you can work with a pendulum. You can see, all right, where's the energy center here? Where do you feel guided to go utilizing your intuitive abilities as well? So you can do it in a denser way as well. Or where you think there's one. You say, you know what, I always feel interesting energy over here. Is there something here? All right, you can check. Check in with yourself. What's your intuition tell you? What's your internal guidance system tell you? But there's a lot of energy available to you here in this location. And as you work, and if you're working as a group, and you're setting that intent, because there are ley lines that are connected, you're sending it off all down those ley lines. All right, so you, it's... Um, it's going out to a lot of different places, a lot farther, all right, in a, in a way that will continue to flow. Sometimes when you put something out into the template, it'll hold for a bit and then it will start to dissipate. When you're putting stuff into the ley lines, it has a tendency to linger a bit longer, all right. Make sense? Anything else? Got just another couple minutes. You mentioned clearing the ley lines. Yes. And usually that's done at a vortex point. Mm -hmm. So if you come, and, and really it's working with the vortex itself, um, and you'll feel it. It, feel, it may feel heavy and dense and thick in that area. You know that there's probably a ley line or a vortex that needs to be cleared. When you clear that and you start putting light energy into it, it goes out. It goes back out. Mm -hmm. So just check in with the vortices. How large are the vortices? They can be minute and they can be enormous. They come in all, all different sizes. So, uh, so could it be the whole town of Woodstock, for instance? Uh, no, it's not that big, no. Okay. No. The largest one you have locally would be the mountain. The what? Would be a mountain. Most generally in this area, 20 feet, if that, that would be a very large one. Most are going to be maybe eight feet in diameter. Can people create vortexes, open vortexes themselves? Yes. And you do that through your own body. Mm. You are a walking vortex. Mm. And that's why you're such a threat to many of these other beings. Because once you open that vortex, you have access to everything. What about a labyrinth? It creates an energetic pattern. It depends on how it's shaped. Now, what it can do for you as you walk the labyrinth is to activate you and um, move your own energy so that you activate your own, own energetic centers and you can be a portal, but not typically. Typically, it simply is to create a vibrational pattern. It's a bit like a crop circle in that way. Also, there's the 
Um, I'm just looking here. Now we wouldn't say uh, there are some portals there, all right, but not not a not a vortex in the way that you're thinking of it. Mm -hmm. There are some portals that, or vortices that will show up from time to time. They're not stable. So they'll pop in and out. That's the other thing with, with some of these, that they're not stable. They can be artificially generated and created and beings can walk in. They can create a portal and walk in. Just as when we say you, when you activate your own energetic centers, you can create uh, your own vortex and you can project yourself elsewhere. You create a, your own little portal and you can, you can project yourself elsewhere and that's pretty much the internal technology that you're utilizing other beings when they're not able to do that themselves they can artificially generate it through technology and most often those are not stable they're not permanent some are a bit more permanent that the intent has been held for so long that you know that this portal attaches to that star system that location so in the Catskill Mountains, there are some mountains that hold vortexes, or do yes. every mountain, does every mountain? Mm, not every mountain. If you look at a range, all right, you're standing and, and you're looking at the beautiful view, there may be one or two that you feel really catch your eye. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones. Right. You can tell there's a difference vibrationally, but not every one, no. Do all portalways connect to the star systems? No, some connect to different parts of the planet. Some go underground. That's why sometimes, well, it's a big reason why you don't interact so much with the beings who are underground because it isn't a way in. It's in a dimensional. Well, this reminds me, something I want to ask you about. I was beginning to get a sense of working with the heart realm and then a higher kind of almost like an energy vortex or energy cathedral, let's say, and then recently more of an earth one, where then, and I felt like it's the future for me, at least personally, where I, then I really felt connected to the earth. Is that anything like, oh, almost like a map, a light, a light map. For you, for about how to activate yourself, right. where to go, right. how to get there. Yes, yeah, so follow it, follow it. And there'll be uh, another series coming here shortly of, of steps and procedures and ways to connect. Thank you. You're very welcome. And does it help in our evolutionary process to make the connection back to our, our star seeding? Or is it irrelevant at this point? Well, what's more important for you to establish is your connection to source because even your star seeding is it's an illusion because you're still source. It's just a level. You go up a level and then there are more levels above that for you to go to. So if you're connecting with source, you're going to a higher level than just your starseed level. So what you want to take from your connections to different systems are the lessons that you pull in from those systems and are applying here. And there may be times where you feel that you resonate with one system more so than another because you're resonating with those lessons or those lifetimes in those systems and you're trying to pull in that information. So you may feel for a while you're connected to the Pleiades and then all of a sudden you feel I this strong connection with Sirius or Orion. It's because your lessons have slightly changed. You've spent time in both. Most of you have been to many, many star systems. It's not just one or two. There's a step process as you lower your frequency or you have different vibrational experiences. And so you've been around come from one star and you come from source all right and as we said most of you when you get to this point where you're down here on earth you've been to multiple star systems mm -hmm. you're not new to the game mm -hmm. you've been around the block all right so we're a bit out of time mm -hmm. know that you can access anything that you want you can access any records they are yours they're waiting for you all you have to do is get out of your own way. All right, get yourself centered. Know that you're not going to receive anything you're not ready for, ever. There's nothing in your, your history that any of you are going to see before you're ready to see it. And that can be a fear that keeps many of you from accessing your records. You think, mm, I'm going to see some lifetimes I'm not interested in reviewing. 
but don't worry. You'll get them when you're ready. As always, dear ones, we are around. You can call on us. We are sending much love, much support, much light, much appreciation, and many well wishes. <laughs>